Hi everyone, today I'd like to show you my top tips for perfect stamping every time. Now stamping is one of those paper craft techniques that some people are a little bit wary of because you don't always get the best impression when you first start and a lot of it is experience. So I'm hoping to get together all of the tips and techniques that I've learned through many years of experience of stamping and give them all to you whether you're a beginner or not. Now each of these uh, techniques and tips I do every single time I stamp and I'm going to show you the alternative and why uh, not doing these might work as well. So let's start first of all with a brand new stamp. Now the items that I'm going to be using is the Adventures in Ink Christmas Simplicity range. Now this is absolutely beautiful, it's brand new stamp collection. We've got sentiments and we've got beautiful detailed line drawings which is why I'd like to show you uh, using these because I think they're perfect for picking out the detail. If you're stamping and you're not picking up detail, you're getting blurry images, images with some missed areas, then definitely this video is for you. Now, of course, don't forget um, if you like videos like this, tips, techniques, and anything paper craft, do subscribe to the Craft Stash YouTube channel, and I'll remind you of that at the end of the video again. So let's take our first stamp and this is one of the cocktail ones so this can be used uh, away from Christmas as well. Now I'm going to first of all put this into a stamping block and we will come to stamping blocks in a little while. And the first thing I'm going to do is stamp on this. I don't need the entire image stamping but I'm going to stamp this across my panel. Now this is a brand new stamp and I've not done what we call prepping it. I've not prepped it at all. And that just means that it's new, it's out of the packaging, and the first thing I'm going to do is put it into my stamping platform and I'm going to stamp it. Okay, so I'm going to take one of my inks. Let's take, uh, this is Memento. We'll cover inks as well in a little while. Now I'm going to pop my ink onto my stamp, fold that onto my paper, press down as you would, and Oh, so I've got a little bit of a missed image. So hopefully you can see that there. We've actually got some distressing going on, some missed areas. This is because when stamps are first made, they have a coating on them. This is a manufacturing process that leaves a coating on them. You just need to remove that coating. Now you will find with stamps that as you start to use them, and of course we use them, then we wipe them clean. Um, they do lose their coating quite quickly, but if you want to be able to get a perfect impression from the first time you use your stamp, if you take an eraser, this is a pencil eraser, and just brush it with the flat side over the surface of the stamp. Now, if you don't have a pencil eraser, you can use your fingers and just give it a really good rub over all of the detail and just basically work away any of that coating that's on there. This is going to give your stamp a really nice um, matte surface to for the ink to grip onto. So just brushing that over. You'll only ever need to do this once. Brush away any little pieces of the eraser that might have come away. Of course you get those. Let's now turn this over and stamp on the reverse. Like I say, you'll only do this once and then that will be perfect for any other times you want to stamp. So just picking my image up. I will use the same ink again. Now already I can see that that has gripped onto that stamp so much better. Got some little bits of eraser on there. So press this down in the same way. I'm not going to press it any more than I did last time. Just get up here as well much much clearer much better so let me just show you this let's turn it over so that was my first impression I've got dotted areas where it's missed and that is much more of a solid line there absolutely perfect so clean your stamps prep your stamps before you go ahead and start stamping with them so my next tip is sharing why you really want to invest in a stamping platform as soon as you possibly can. Um, we always used to stamp with acrylic blocks and many of us still have these blocks and they are and were a wonderful tool. 
um, but the precision, particularly if you're trying to apply even pressure or if you're trying to reposition a stamp into the same place again, maybe you've missed a bit of your image, it's really difficult with acrylic blocks. So let me show you first of all stamping with an acrylic block. Um, so we'd of course uh, attach our stamp here to the acrylic block. They'd stick in the same way as they would in a stamping platform. We'd add our ink directly to the stamp. In fact, this is actually one that I haven't prepped yet, just as I was showing you, so I must do that. But let's just stamp this now. First of all, we could stamp this and we could miss it. So for example, because we're not applying even pressure, it might be that we miss part of the image. Now I've purposely just done this, um, but that's fine. We might say, okay, so we're going to just apply a little more ink to the image. And then we need to try and line this up in exactly the same place. Now, I'm going to have a go at this, looking through the stamp, trying to see if I can line this up. And then I'm going to press down again. And as you can see, or hopefully you can see, I've kind of double stamped it. It's very, very difficult to get that in exactly the same place. Alternatively also, if you're using a stamp like this, Let's just apply that ink let's turn this over you don't always get even pressure because the acrylic block can rock so I might be pressing this down and I'm just accidentally pressing too much on one edge now again I'm purposely doing this to be able to show you and again that's the sort of image so you might get ink from the background of the stamp there you might get blurry images where it's pressed in too hard you might actually lift the other end of the stamp up and then reposition it back down not in the correct place so that's uh, how not to use a stamp if you can help it great tool for beginners but if you want those perfect um, impressions definitely invest in a stamping platform so with a platform you have your magnets to hold your paper um, in, still in place usually, uh, certainly you do with the Creative Craft Products one. Pick your stamp up in the same way, you can apply your ink in the same way. And then when we fold this over, now what I love about the Creative Craft Products one is that hasn't actually stamped onto the paper yet and it won't do until I press it down. It's got some little springs on the sides so I can position that and make sure it's in the right place. Now with this, wherever I press this on the block, I'm going to get even pressure. The whole uh, block or platform here isn't able to rock and it's not able also to give me too much pressure. I'm not actually able to press down too hard with this, so uh, I can I can actually really press, 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 and I'm not going to get that sort of really thick kind of blurry image where I've just got too much ink. I just get a perfect result every time. And also, of course, if I want to reposition, or sorry, re-ink my stamp, so let's just do that, so apply more ink to the stamp, and then restamp this for any reason. You may have missed a bit of inking in the first instance, or you may just want a damp image, maybe for heat embossing, you want to apply another layer of ink. Um, you can do that, no problem, absolutely perfectly in the same place again. So definitely a stamping platform is uh, a tool that I couldn't stamp without. Now I have two tips rolled into one for this next technique and sometimes you may think that stamping more than one stamp at a time is fine and it is and it isn't. If you'd like to stamp more than one stamp at a time I would say that should be okay on a large enough platform provided you use the same brand across the platform. So I'm going, I'm placing three different sentiments onto a piece of paper here. Now I've got uh, two from the Adventures in Ink collection that we've been looking at and one is a very old stamp of mine, a completely different brand, I couldn't even tell you the brand now, but essentially it's just something different, a different brand. So I'm just thinking, well I'm trying to stamp all my card sentiments that I'm making that day at once, so I'm going to pick them up. I do need to just quickly prep 
these uh, words because I've not done that yet and these top and bottom ones from the Adventures in Ink are brand new so just give them a little bit of a rub with my eraser let's just take let's take my versifying Claire my favorite or one of my favorite inks to use and I'm going to ink all three stamps okay so pressing lots of ink on there And then just a little bit of excess on my platform, wipe that away. I'm going to press these into my paper. So pressing this down. Now, so you can see the best wishes has stamped absolutely perfectly. Now let's try to get more of this Merry and Christmas. I'm still struggling to get a good impression, certainly on the Christmas, even the Merry has got some missed areas. This will be because the center stamp that I've got here will be slightly deeper than the other two. And it may be the other way around. It could be that your Adventures in Ink stamps would be slightly deeper than another one and they would stamp first before the others. So these two are struggling to reach the, the depth of the paper before this one kind of blocks the platform from going down any further. So if you are stamping at all and you want to stamp multiples, let's just turn this over and do this with three from the Adventures in Ink. And I'll just show you how they look. You can, of course, stamp more than one. So let's pop that in the middle. Again, prep this one very quickly. Just a quick preparation. Make sure they're all going to fit on my paper, my cardstock within my platform and again ink these so now these should all be the same height because they are the same brand of stamp so pop these over one two three there we go all stamped absolutely perfectly and that's exactly what i would hope for if i was stamping lots at once the last thing you want to do is be uh, trying to re-stamp areas now if you do have the issue where you have accidentally uh, done that and you have stamped a couple of images and they've come out fine but a couple haven't just remove the one or two that have stamped okay and then in a platform you can re-stamp the ones that need to go over again now something I've already mentioned and that's choosing your ink wisely so uh, there's a couple of different inks that I definitely recommend when you're looking at images like this that are detailed and you want to pick out that fine detail and they're the two I've been using so Memento ink now Memento is a dye ink a dye ink will soak into your paper nicely and once it's dry then it's waterproof um, you've also got Versafine Claire or uh, Versafine, there are diff a few different ones under this brand. They are a pigment ink. So pigment inks kind of sit on the top of the paper and these are really good for heat embossing because they stay wet a little bit longer. You still get really nice detail with them. Now the first thing I'm going to do is stamp with an alternative ink. Now this is a bit dirty but this is a distress ink. It's water-based, you can stamp with them and you get some lovely effects, but as the name says, very often you'll get a distressed effect. Now this is because as it sits onto the stamp, what you often find is for some reason it kind of pulls on the surface of the stamp and you don't always get a clear image. So if I just show you this, let's press that down a little bit further there we go so I've not got a perfectly clear image here so I would say distress inks being one of the most popular ink brands are more for your ink blending um, you can stamp with them but you're going to be getting distressed um, effects with them so let's just turn this over and let's just take a look at how different it looks when you use one of the uh, inks that are perfect for stamping and you can get these in other colors you don't have to just uh, get them in black there we go so we can see the difference there between the distress ink and the memento ink so definitely choose your inks wisely and I would always suggest when you start stamping to invest in one of these two for your detail black stamping.
So my second from last tip is to think about the paper that you're stamping onto or the cardstock. So if you're stamping onto something like a watercolour cardstock, if you imagine how textured watercolour cardstock is, if you're stamping onto that, you're bound to get some missed areas. So areas where, because the paper is textured, you're getting lumps and bumps and different heights and the stamp's just not going to reach all of those very easily. So let's pop this down, try to press down all the areas. So we'll give you a true image. As you can see, we are getting missed spots. Now this is quite an extreme example uh, because this is a very heavily textured watercolor cardstock. So I would suggest you go with a, um, a white, or well, any color, but a smooth cardstock. So just let me show you the difference, just line that up, just press this all over in exactly the same way. Um, I don't worry about wiping off any excess ink if I get it on the stamp because I know that's not going to reach the paper, but just in case I do wipe it from around the platform where I can, make sure that's lined up. And let's press this down now onto the smooth paper instead and you can see the difference let's just grab those bits there we go so as you can see the difference there you've got a much much clearer image now if you do want to stamp onto a watercolor paper or cardstock because you'd like to go in and use your watercolors afterwards I would suggest going with the Creative Craft Products watercolour white cardstock. This is because it's smooth. Although it's a watercolour cardstock, it's 300 GSM and it does hold water and other wet mediums really nicely. It is perfectly smooth. So you kind of get the best of both worlds there. Now I did say one last tip for you. Um, just before I tell you that, don't forget of course, you can check out our channel here. There's a video for you here to watch with lots of other paper craft tips and techniques. And if you love these, please do subscribe to the Craft Stash channel, but do let your ink dry. If you don't and you start cutting into this or coloring it too soon, you're just going to smudge your image. Thank you everybody. I hope to see you again very, very soon.